Hello, everybody. How are you? We're with another installment of Wednesday Wine with Ana Belaval, live from Chicago, Illinois. It's when we get to complain about hump day, stuck in the middle of the week. Obviously, this Wednesday is a little better than last. And we have our wine ready and a great great let's say half hour if the two of us can get to stop talking because we both like to talk a lot before i introduce you to my guest if you hear you hear that noise okay you hear that noise well i'm just gonna do this little pan i i apologize for that noise but that's my seven-year-old alex who is taking no it's fine it's fine. This adds this adds flavor to the whole thing. Alex is taking his virtual soccer class. Uh, and when was this virtual soccer class going to be? On Wednesdays, right when I do uh, Wednesday wine. But that's okay. We adjust and we deal with it. And, uh, and that's what we do. Oh my goodness, we already have so many people on and I know why, because you love her just like I love her. Hello, Debbie, hello, Pierce, Joanne, Danielle, Elsa, Rosario. <laughs> Rosario's calling her Robina. Her name is not Robina. Her name is the one and only Robin Baumgarten. And I'm gonna bring her in. Cheers. You know what? I'm out of red wine. I've got root beer. I'm embarrassed to say, and I'm not doing white. I don't do white. So do I'm white. having root beer. Why don't you do white? I don't like it. It, it just seems very, yeah, it doesn't do it for me. You I'm know my problem with white, with white wine? I drink it too fast. Yeah. Yeah. It gave, it, you know what? It's like, it seems like a summer drink. I'm not there yet. I'm not on a patio. I'm outside. I'm maudlin. I'm in my hotel room. You're <laughs> okay, Robin, you need like a little, you know, pictures of the girls on your nightstand? No, I've got some pictures on the other dresser over there. Okay. okay. But, um, you know, see, that's like, yeah, they're over okay. there. Okay. Okay. You My know, God, how is it uncluttered? Huh? How uncluttered is your place? I'm kind of OCD about, about stuff. I gotta I say, that. I throw a lot. I just keep throwing stuff out. I got so excited. I got one of those big bins. You know, those big bins like you see in people's driveways when they rent and they, they tear off their roof. I got one just to throw stuff away. And I don't even have that much stuff. But it was the, I'm telling you, I've never been more excited. <laughs> There's only the three of you in a house. <laughs> just throwing out stuff. It's great. It's just this feeling of, and I'm asking my neighbors, you got any stuff? Fill up the bin. I'm like, it's the best. It is the best. It's like, whoosh, unloading. Did you fill it up? Oh, I filled up half of it. You'd be surprised what you have, like old suitcases, just a bunch of crap. Can I say That's that? what people tell me. Why do you live in the city? You need more space. I think we're, we would live just as cluttered just because my because we're cluttery people, you know? You, just, like, you fill up the like, space you have no matter where like, you are. Yeah. Like right now I'm looking and my husband and my son hung all the coats <gasps> they've used for the last three days on the high chairs by the kitchen. <laughs> You pick your battles, Anna. That's what you do. You pick your battles. Every new year, I tell my children, this year we're living without clutter. When you guys show up, we put everything away where it belongs because it, there is space for everything you have. That's right. Not working. No. How are the kids no. doing? How are they holding up? Maybe not. Go away. <laughs> I know. Hi, Alex. Robin says hi. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you can come in. Go go do your soccer. You will have 50 minutes left. Okay. He's doing, they're doing fine. You know, we're dealing with uh, possibly going back to school hybrid because yes. they're at CPS. And I bet they're excited. Like my daughter that's in high school goes back. They don't want to. No. Oh. No. My, my 13 year old specifically, she's like, I have great grades. I'm not distracted by BS. Uh, it's fine. But yeah, she doesn't well, that's good. Like, I have to force her to go to jewel with me. <laughs> See, mine are dying to get away from me. They're like, <laughs> they're like, give me an out. Me out. You need to go to Target. You need me to get gas. You need me to get anything. Oh, they drive. Yeah. They drive. Yes. Yes. So they are running away from me. It's, yeah. It's, she, it's, they, this one doesn't drive and has her own little world and her yeah. Roblox. And I'm always thinking yeah. she's 
plotting to meet some Russian man in a corner who told her he's 13. <laughs> Here's the problem, Robin, and this is why. God forbid. God forbid. You, you know, I'm sure everything's fine. She's, she's just. It, the oh, thing is. No, a little bit. Robin, the, okay. wor the worst thing is that you grab their phones, but they know so much more than us that you look at it and you're like, where do I go? Right. What do they know? Oh, Amelia, who's this? Oh, that's a, a group chat that I have because of the robot. When did that, yeah. can you explain that to me? So like, I have to learn from her and then try and discipline her right. about and then there's like three different levels of Instagram accounts, three different uh -huh. levels of Snapchat accounts that are super secret double probation Snapchat accounts. And I'm like, I don't even, you know. That and, here, and here's the thing. I have watched obsessively. They're all worried about me. Too many crime shows. Oh, yeah. Did you I watch did. Criminal Minds? No, I forgot. Anna. I know. But then right. Tyra, our friend Tyra, told me that she started watching it and then she had to stop and back out a little because she started suspecting from everyone. Like she saw oh, the guy next true. to me on the plane is a serial killer. The lady at the jewel is a serial killer. You're right. Like, well, I got to tell you, anytime I ride by a white van that has no windows, I'm like, mm hmm. And you know, that's a terrible assumption to make, but it's like it's all watch too much criminal mind for crime shows. You, 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 it gets in there. And then I watched uh, 48 hours in Chicago, the missing persons episodes. Oh. And I've been driving everyone insane here about how every 30 minutes someone goes missing in Chicago. I, or, you know, Good for me. I, I was, I was talking, you know, Ingrid, our lovely makeup uh -huh. artist uh -huh. in the afternoon and I just love her to death. I miss you, Ingrid, if she's watching this. I know. I never see it anymore. She is, you know, always used to be the one that would keep me on my toes. You know, you got to keep your head on a swivel. She goes, my friend who lives in New York was walking down the street and there was a guy who carried a hammer in a lunch bag and he would just go up and clunk people on the head and knock them out cold and then drag them out. I'm like, <laughs> I think of that every time, getting clunked on the head with a hammer in a lunch bag. You don't know. You don't know. That's very New York, though. Like, you don't hear that in Chicago. That's very New York. Because I feel I feel like we lived in New York for a while. And I feel like New York caters to all sorts of crazies, right? Like, you, like if there is an obsession that you have and you've taken it to another level, you'll find a group in New York. And I love the city. But, you know, they take crazy to another level. Yeah. And so the guy, remember who was it? Greg Moranis, who got punched? Oh, Rick Moranis. The pandemic? Rick yeah. Moranis. Yeah. Soccer punched, just cause. I mean, so this is what I've been binge watching and I don't know if you have. I've been binge watching How to Get Away with Murder. Well, watched it already. You That's watched it? With uh, Viola Davis? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. I watched seasons one and two. I know there's more after that, but then it's like, you know how when there's a great show and you have to take a break, you're like, what? There's no season three, I have to wait. I have to wait two months and then you never get back into it. That's my problem. That Okay, so here's the thing. I'm on season three, but Shonda Rhimes stretches her shows, right? So sometimes I'm like, Shonda, this is what happened with Scandal. You focused a little too much on the love story and I uh -huh. wanted more of how are you going to get that weirdo out of that mess? So yeah. this is what's yep. happening to me with how to get away with murder that I would like them to get the more weird cases to work on them and not be with the, I don't I need to see that much sex. Seriously. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> and that takes us to Bridgerton girl. I needed a Come shower. On. Right. I'm telling you. And the weirdest thing was I knew it was coming out. Right. And so mm -hmm. I, I love like the Jane Austen, but obviously we've discussed that a million times. And so I love Sense and Sensibility, all of those. Sanditon mm -hmm. is a good one. It's on PBS, by the way. That's another, uh, oh, it's a Jane Austen dropping book. Dropping the PBS. What's I next? I heard that on NPR. Oh, yeah. No, I just, you know, every now and then I, I dabble. So I told my mom, who loves mm -hmm. everything England and Jane Austen, and I said, oh, well, there's this new show coming on Netflix because she has Netflix now. And I'm like, it's Bridgerton. Oh and it's a like Austin kind of. <laughs> oh my God, no. <laughs> Don't you know? Oh I talked to my mom like the next day after I mentioned to her, she's like, that's a great show. That's a really great show. And that and was it. Duke is very sexy. And we sure saw a lot of him. 
<laughs> Mrs. Oh, Baumgarten. I shouldn't have told that to my mom, but oh. she's she's all on board with the Bridgerton. Is mm -hmm. she? Oh yeah. Oh my. So I remember a couple years ago, three years ago, when my niece lived here and she would watch Netflix. I'm like, Mariana, at 16, you've seen more sex than I've ever seen, like at 40 something. These these shows are crazy. And here I am watching I Bridgerton. And I'm like, what? Oh, what? But listen, <laughs> my husband's happy that I watched it. Everything's I, fine. I mean, it's it's oh my god. And then you did so well interviewing those two the other day because all I could no, do was screw stare up at him. Dean was so professional. And then he's like, oh, Robin's all excited. And then I'm like, is that uh, the headlights? Uh, 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 then, you, you. It was like Chris Farley on Saturday Night Live. Remember? Remember when you did that, that, that dancing? That was, that was really great. That was like, that was God, what's wrong with me? What is wrong with me? I'm like, God, nothing like freaking out over Ricky Martin, who oh, only women God. in their 30s and 40s know who he is. And what, Anna, you're the one who said, and it's so true, when we had that mystery guest on the other day, and it was Marie Osmond, Anna's like, Marie Osmond is Larry's Ricky Martin. I've never seen him so excited all these years. Am I, you are not lying. Giddy, giddy. giddy. Do you ever see a giddy Larry Potash? He swiveled, swiveled on his chair. It's like, he didn't get a question out. He couldn't focus. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's his gal. That she's topping his list. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Larry's wife is a hundred times prettier oh, I than know. Marie Osmond. I know. But the thing is that there, that's your thing, you know. Like when when it's that childhood connection. It's a, and Marie was awesome. But I didn't realize she was so young when she was doing. That variety show and all that. My God, she was like a teenager, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what were we doing? Nothing. I sure okay. was. Listen to me. What after Bridgerton, what else should I be watching? Okay. I got a list now. Oh, you got a list. Also on the PBS, the masterpiece. <laughs> I'm, I'm turning into like a hundred year old lady. I yes, know. You are. World on Fire. It's a British drama set in World War II. Um and it's got Jonah Howard King, the guy who's going to play Prince Eric in the new Little Mermaid movie, the live action Little Mermaid. He's like a 20 something guy. So he's like the main character. Helen Hunt's in it. There's a couple things. It's only about, I think, maybe eight episodes. Oh, it's so good. They haven't done a second season yet, but each one's an hour long. It is so good. World on Fire. Okay. All right. World. I'm going to put it on the comments. On World Fire. On Fire. That's a good one. There you go. Okay. Um, do you, have you seen that Perry Mason reboot on uh, on HBO? You know Matthew no. Reese, the guy who's married to Carrie Russell, the one who's in the Americans. Oh, that they they got they hooked up together during the yeah. American. The, yes. Yes. And so he plays Perry Mason in this reboot of Perry Mason, which sounds also like a something a hundred year old lady would recommend. Oh, I'm with you. Oh, but is it called Perry Mason? Perry Mason was an old show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is it called Perry Mason? It's just called Perry Mason. And it's like an eight episode. Oh, was it Perry Mason? Mason kind of chubby? Well, oh yeah, it was Raymond Burr. He was he really, was he was like a big, this is like a, a reimagining, like how Perry Mason became Perry Mason. Like, you know, when he's like younger, before he was a lawyer, it's kind of, it, it's a good eight episode spin if you're bored. We can do that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, oh, did you watch that Barry on HBO, you know, with Bill Hader? That was really creepy for me. Oh, too creepy. Got really creepy. Should I yeah. give it another chance? You know, I guess maybe I don't have uh, the aversion to the creepy stuff as I, I There's certain things that, yeah, I mean, I guess the whole premise because he's a hitman. <laughs> right. He grew up with that. Um, there are some comedic moments in there, but Henry Winkler's in it, and he's good. But there, I yeah, love him. It's it's a dark comedy for sure. But I like it. Is, that's style. what it was. That it was super dark. I may not have been at the right place. I need to be at the right place to. You know, in the right place, set of, yeah. yeah. How about the morning show? Did you watch that one with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon? No. And I bet that is the exact attitude I had. Uh -huh. Because I'm like, oh, it's an Apple subscription. And we it's already live it. And we live it. No, it was really good. 
I, that's what, I, that's that's what everyone says. Me, I got to tell you, I went in with a real dark attitude and I came out and it was an enjoyable ride. You are going to like it. It's not what you expect. It's not like. Really? It's not like I'm going to be like, oh, they tried to do that, but that's no. not. No, it was, it was, it was well done. It was more about other stuff than being on a morning show. So I, I thought it was pretty good. Okay. That was pretty good. Um, I also watched, <laughs> I'm, I'm embarrassed that I'm going to say this. There was a, <laughs> if Larry could hear this, I could hear his voice in my head or Pat's. I watched a Laura Ingalls Wilder documentary on PBS. <laughs> and it was, it was very good. Little House on the Prairie. I lived it. And now I watched the documentary. Wah, wah, wah. But it was not really good. What is going on with you? You have like a prairie period. I don't know. I just, I, I. I don't know. Is are, it are you not paying for your subscriptions and you can only now watch like basic? No, it's, I don't know. How, I saw, I read something about it and then I watched it. I'm like, what am I doing with my life, Anna? Really? I love the documentary. I love the documentaries. Did you I, watch that, that one about the, uh, the woman who from Theranos, that inventor about the woman who came no, up with I have the to watch that. What's that the name of that? One. What's that the name of that? It's called Inventor Out for Blood in Silicon Valley. It's about Elizabeth Holmes. She's that woman who came up with, oh, we can do every test from one drop of blood. And it was all, now she's going to court. She's being, she could go to jail for 20 years. She made it all up. She was like a disaster. Well, yeah, it was, she dressed like Steve Jobs in the black turtlenecks, remember? And she dropped out, she was this genius and then she couldn't back it up with, re anyway, she, she has to go on trial next, this year. I, I know, is it on Netflix? I think that one's HBO. Oh, I got that. Cause I, cause you know, now we're all increasing. I have prime, I have oh, HBO yeah. max, buy whatever you can. So oh, this is it. never ending. So we might as well just buy all the, all the stuff. Yeah. Hey, tell what, me, like, what's what the name again? For me? Wait, what's the name again? That's, that is inventor out for blood in Silicon oh, Valley. Oh. Okay. So oh, I'm gonna give you one more documentary. Do it. This one's on Hulu. Do you have Hulu? Mm, but I can hand, I can find can a way. Get it. Try a week subscription. I can get Natalie's uh, yeah, pass code. Oh, Mary. Don't say that. She's she's gonna pay for it. Um, it's called Fifty Children, Mr. and Mrs. Kraus. It's like a hour and a half. It's this story of two of a Jewish couple in New York in 1939. This girl found out after her grandmother died. She had these this journal that her grandma, her grandma never told her this, that her grandmother and her grandfather, um, before, when Hitler was on the rise, went personally to Germany to get 50 Jewish children out of Germany and get them back to the, get them to the United States and what they went through. They went there as Jewish people and got these 50 Jewish children out. It's unbelievable. Just a good story about, I mean, a story about good, goodness of people in the midst of awful, horrific times, the goodness oh. was out there. It was a oh very, my God. It, was, it, was a, it was really unbelievable story. So that's oh. called 50 children. We want to hear from you too on what you guys have been watching. Here we go. This is what I've been watching. I told you already that I've been watching uh, how to get away with murder. Okay. I've been watching, you're going to like this, pretend it's a city. Oh. It's a Martin Scorsese documentary with Fran Lebowitz, you know, the yeah. opinion writer. So yeah. it's her New York, right? And he just talks to her about her attitude towards New York. It's only like six episodes and what bothers Fran and what she likes and how she ended up in New York. She used to drive a cab. She, she got to wow. New York. Yeah. It's really interesting. And she... She's almost like our thought process when we don't talk about it. Like when you, when you, when she says that, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I agree. I hate when people do that. So good, it's so beautifully shot too. Oh, and Scorsese is so good. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Oof, murder on Mid Middle Beach. Oh, I saw it. Too. Middle Beach. Mur murder on Middle Beach. Oh. Mm hmm. That's okay, the one where the son does a documentary about. The murder of his mother that happened 10 years before or something like that. 
discuss. Robin, how sad is that that boy has spent six years of his life and that father won't Oh boy, I don't know if I'm frozen or if you're frozen. Hold on. Okay, hold on. I learned that. Right, hello. Okay, go ahead. Okay, how sad is it that that boy has spent six years trying to figure this out and his father won't say ah, a thing? I know. There's something, it's it's heartbreaking, right? His dad won't talk about it. It's it's very, it's, it's that is a great one. That and is then, a great one. And then the dad is like, well, fathers don't have to say anything to their sons, but just clarify for this kid. Just, and then it's so waspy, right? Like, because they don't tell any, they don't talk about anything, right? No, they just it's like, it's just that happened. We put that on a shelf. Move yeah. on. The yeah. kid, they're clearly not Catholic or Jewish because the kid didn't know that his mom was an alcoholic. If oh. our mother were alcoholics, the entire family would know oh, yeah. and yeah. you and intervene. He didn't know his mom had financial troubles. Didn't know what his dad was doing. Didn't know his aunt was crazy. It was like, dude. I know. It was, and that was only like two or three episodes. So that's when you can blow through pretty quick. That was really and the good. sister broke my heart. Oh my God. She just moved away. She just yeah. left. She's like, I'm out of here. I can't she do that. She wanted a new life. Yeah. She wanted, yeah. So let me see what else. Cause I got to look at my iPad. Cause this is oh, let me, while you're getting your list. Let me say in the, with the Martin Scorsese thing that you mentioned, mm -hmm. I know your husband likes music and. Mm -hmm. He loves old music. Speaking mm -hmm. of Martin Scorsese documentaries, the very first documentary ever did, which someone turned me on to this a while ago, The Last mm -hmm. Waltz, based on the 70s group, the band. Uh -huh. um, you know, they you'll recognize some of their songs, and Steve will mm -hmm. know some of them. It's mm -hmm. their they, they were this big session band that every famous artist in the 60s and 70s work with. So they it's it's just a documentary, it shows their live farewell concert. And the people that just keep showing up to, to do songs with them, and I'm not into watching jamming concerts. You know, I don't mm -hmm. care about this stuff. Mm -hmm. You have Joni Mitchell. You have Neil Diamond. You have Bob, uh, Bob Dylan. Uh, wow. All these people just come and sing a song. It was amazing. Amazing. Okay. It's called The Last Waltz. It's old. It was, like, done in the 70s, but it's fan-freaking-tastic. Fantastic. I uh, binge watched a series called, but this is in Spanish, but you, it can be dubbed or you can read subtitles. Yeah. It's called Monarca. It was produced by Salma Hayek and it is amazing. It's about it Monarca, like monarchy. Oh, okay. It's about this family who owns a tequila company and the dad is brutally murdered. And <laughs> here I go with the murders again. Mm -hmm. uh, and he leaves his daughter who has left for LA and married an American guy, he makes her come back and become the head of the company. And she finds all the seedy stuff that the, his, her brothers are doing. Mm -hmm. And it is beautifully shot. The outfits are amazing. I love and it. I heard you watched Narcos. <gasps> you know what I keep doing? I gotta tell you, I keep running around the house swearing in Spanish and I know I'm saying some really offensive stuff, but I can't stop myself. I mean, yes. I would go into it now, but I'm telling you, I am fluent in Spanish swear words now. Uh, swear words okay, now. Well, like which one? What'd you say? Like which one? I, I do am it. afraid because I think it's it's no, it's, do it. the, it's the it's the it's the big mf or one. Hijo de puta. With a p. Hijo de puta. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I can't. The guy who plays Pablo Escobar. Oh, so amazing. I could and not. He's Brazilian. So like his first language is not Spanish. I couldn't believe that. And then I did a deep dive on interviews that he's done where he, he was Portuguese. He had to learn Spanish. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? He was yes. mesmerizing. I am. I stuck to Narcos one and then I started watching Narcos Mexico and then I, it was too much. I'm like, yeah, I had to quit. I had to quit because no. you know what? I got to tell you, I missed Pablo. I, I miss missed Pablo. <laughs> he was I miss his women. I missed his women. Remember I, that woman who was like his nemesis? Yes, the, the reporter lady? No, the no, woman. the reporter lady was his mistress. It was yeah. his the woman who like the first scene, she's in the hot tub with her husband, and then he oh, murders yeah. her. Husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, becomes yeah. like the boss. <laughs> I follow her on Instagram now. Yes, yes I do. 
Oh my God. I was just, and here's me. You know, I don't like to do any extra work where I have to like read subtitles, but I'm like, I think I'm, I think I'm fluent in Spanish again. I took one year of Spanish in high school and I got it down now. I got it down. I'm like, I didn't have to read. But have you gotten to the age where I use subtitles for English too? I use subtitles for everything now because I'm old and I want to make sure I understand what they're saying. I, you know what? I have such a hard, unless the screen is this big, I have to, if I see, especially if there's, you just wait. I watched some movie with my daughters where it was like all about text messaging and like, you know, bullying and text messaging. Yeah. I had to keep, <laughs> I had to keep pausing it and going up to the, I'm like, wait, what does that say? I could, it's like, unless they blow it up like this, I'm like, wait, what? That's awful. I'm like, <laughs> Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I can't tell you. I, so I watch it on this and I'm like this. And we <laughs> work hard at this. I'm like, and my husband tries to talk to me. I'm like, we've been together 24 years. Hold on. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All that. Okay. So, yeah. So, and then I also watch, do you remember this case? Because I just got HBO Max and I like to see what uh, documentaries they have. Yeah. And it's an awful story about this woman who is driving her five nieces and her son back from uh, their lake house. And um, from, from a, a lake, like a lake vacation. And her husband takes the pickup with the RV and she takes the kids. And she starts driving against traffic and the, like the New York highway. And people start calling, there's a woman driving with a car full of kids and she's driving against traffic and she gets in a head on collision and everyone but her son die in the car. Well, wait a minute. I remember this is a new story. This was a couple yeah. of years ago, wasn't yeah. it? And it's called something's wrong with aunt oh, Susie no. or aunt, something like that. And it's her family trying to oh. prove that she wasn't an alcoholic because they find a vodka bottle in there and she has a blood alcohol level that's way past. Oh no. What, did they ever figure out what I mean was so the conclusion not to not to um but this is the problem like you you think that someone who go who likes to go around town watches like let's feed Phil or yeah I know but sometimes I love a documentary I don't know I just I don't and I'm I don't know. my therapist he may be a little worried about me but I told my therapist it's escape it's escape escapism escapism how do you say that escapism mm -hmm. escapism for me you know it's like I focus on almost like a reporter what's going yes, on yeah, who did yeah. what I I'm I'm rarely worried that it's going to happen to me and like when Wednesday when all hell broke loose I couldn't watch it anymore and oh, Thursday no. I, I watched know. CNN over and over again and I was like I'm going to watch some crimes I need something you need something to escape yeah and if that's it it's just if you know it's not it's not happening right now. Yes. It's so anyway, it this woman, so what ended up happening is that um, their version is she was drunk, but their yeah. version is that she had stopped at a gas station to get painkillers and they didn't have Advil and they didn't have Tylenol and she had major toothache oh. and they think she tried to numb it with vodka. Oh, it's just... And she made it happen. She may have had a tooth infection and the vodka and fever. And so she was because her nieces called their dad. Yeah. Something's wrong with her. She's not feeling oh. well. She got sick at the side of the road. Oh. It's so heartbreaking because, like, you don't know how people survive this. It's just, oh, oh, this one, this one, this one, the staircase. Oh, saw it. No, you yeah, the choir there. That is amazing. I still don't know. Robin, what do you think? I don't. I still don't know. I think, you know, usually you come out of a, a documentary and they usually are kind of leaning one way or the other, the way they're presented. I seriously still don't know the answer to that. And I'm not going to blow anything for people who want to watch it. You will come out still going, I really don't know what happened there. But it is a really a weird set of coincidences, right? Uh, mm hmm like but then what killed me is that, you know, usually you don't, you see prisoners hardened, but this man was so frail in health that killed me. And his children were so supportive, but this is something I've learned after listening to a lot of Dateline podcasts. And I told my husband this already, I like if I fall in the shower, he needs to, he needs to lawyer up. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> go have to lawyer up. And you know, I'm clumsy enough that I can fall in the shower. I'm gonna I'm gonna die off my own two feet. Right. But he's gonna have to lawyer up. Yeah. I mean, it just you don't know. There's a lot of spouses. I mean, I'm telling you, those, those podcasts, I'm addicted to those true crime podcasts too. What is wrong? What do you listen to? Your girl, your girls are sabotaging um, your time. I like Anatomy of Murder <laughs> is a podcast. Okay, I'll write this is with a former police detective and a former New York prosecutor. Okay. And they dissect, you know, uh, an unsolved murder or one that's solved, but they go to, here's where the policeman did the, here's why the prosecutor did this. Here's what they were thinking. Cause you know, you get a lot of them like crime junkie is a good yeah. one, you know, where they just tell the story. But I like that these two are like, uh, uh, here's why the prosecutor did this. Here's why this, and here's what they should have done. That's a real good one. That's After I watched, uh, the murder next door, an American family or whatever on Netflix. Oh my God. Yes. That's that that's the one that just happened, right? Yes. After I watched that, then I found a, a podcast that that focuses on interrogations. Ooh. So it analyzes, it says, whatever you say, it's the name of the podcast. Ooh, right. And it, they record, they, they grab different interrogations between police and suspects, and not all of them end up in a confession, yeah. but they analyze why the cops are doing what they're doing. Yes. And it's like, as smart as I think I am, turns out there's people that know more than me about why things should be done a certain way. And that's what's fascinating me. It's like, you know, cause you're just like, why don't those cops arrest him? Why don't they do this? Well, here's what. Yeah. Uh, Robin, to finalize this list, Cobra Kai, is that something I'm gonna enjoy? Did you ever see Karate Kid? Yes. Okay. I. I remember seeing it years ago. Was it my favorite? No. Is Do I go around talking about Karate Kid like, oh my God, it was the best thing uh -huh. ever? It was all right. I mean, I think guys talk about it more than I did. And so my sister is the one who told me, you got to watch Cobra Kai. I'm like, Ugh. I had the same. I'm telling you, it's done so well and so tongue in cheek and funny. And they're in on the joke that this is, we're going back to the 80s and this guy's still a little messed up. And it's really, they're in on the joke. That's what makes it good. And it's only like, 30 minute episodes and you don't have to remember anything about karate kid. You really don't. Cause they have these flashbacks to the oh, old movie okay. and it, you take an, a, an episode here or there and they're funny. It's really, oh, it's really well done. So that one is, is definitely worth doing. And so then should I go to criminal minds as I watch how to get away with murder or do I need to stop how to get away with murder and start criminal minds? Well, the good thing about criminal minds, the episodes are self-contained. You know, it's like a 50, it's not an ongoing story. They might have one story that runs through the season, but it's separate crimes are solved, 50 minutes. Shamar Moore gets the job done. I mean, that's all. He's not, in the, he's not in the show anymore, is he? He's not, but he was there for like 12 years and there's like 15 seasons of it somewhere and you're starting at the beginning and it's, a, it's great to throw on before you go to bed, 50 minutes, crime is solved, we're all good. <sighs> I got to this house. Mind Hunter on Netflix. Oh, that's a good one too. I've seen all of these. Oh my God, I have seen, that's the one with um, the guy from Glee. What What's his name? Which one? Which um, one? The guy from Glee. Hold on. Hey, Mary. Mary. Wow. Anna. What's the name of the guy from uh, Glee? The one who, uh, the, the guy who's in Mind Hunter. Jonathan Groff? I think it's Jonathan Groff. He's okay. the one who played the um, King George in uh, Hamilton. Oh, I love him. So he plays one of the FBI guys. It's the start of the FBI. They're the serial killer squad. Okay. They, 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 that's good. Bloodline and Broadchurch. How are you with those? I've seen The Keepers is unbelievable. It's very sad. That's a documentary about a, a nun that was murdered in the 60s. Okay. And they go, that's an unbelievable one. That is very good. I Love saw it. You saw, I it? saw it? I saw it. I, I mean, I saw it on my list, but I wasn't sure. And I saw Broadchurch is great too. And Bloodline, I keep meaning to watch and I have not watched yet. My favorite murder. What is that? Oh, that's a podcast. Yes, okay. that's okay. that's where they're talking about. But 
that's like I think they're I tried that once, but it's like they're they're comedians and they're kind of like jokey joking about stuff. And oh. I I couldn't get into it because I was kind of I mean it's a good. I mean, it's not like they're doing anything inappropriate, but it was no, like, no, yeah. it's more like I want the deep dive. And, and I don't want the narration. I want the interview. Like, I, I want a very the guy, popular one. You know, like the guy, I started reading something called American Scandal or something. It was a podcast and the guy dramatizes everything. And I don't like that. I want to get my interviews with my investigators. Look, we're professionals, Anna. We want it straightforward, don't we? We want facts. We don't want <laughs> to embellish. Because we want to come to our own conclusions. Look at these fancy graphics you've got here. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Your girl's growing up. Your girl's maturing. This is better than WGN. She's mature. And, I, and did you notice that I click them on? Oh, this is awesome. So the queen of, uh, oh, the queen of the chess one, right? The yeah, queen gambit. gambit. Queen gambit. gambit. This is exactly how, Ellen, this is exactly how I would have said it. The queen of gambit. <laughs> Bridgerton, yes, this is exactly. Those are all great. All They're great. All great. I didn't think that I was going to get into that um, Queen's Gambit, and I did. It sucks you in. It sucks you that, right in. That mom was fantastic. Oh, I know. Oh, well, this Robin, really I could talk to you for like a freaking hour. I know. And look at the two of I, Anna. I'm hoping to God that I have stuff to talk about once I leave my house and I stop watching so much TV. I don't know what is wrong with me. This is all I do. What else are you doing? What, are we doing? Can, what are we gonna talk about, right? Oh, you know what? You'd be proud of me. I read a mm. book. <laughs> a new one or a class? Don't tell I me know. you read Pride and Pre Prejudice again. It's it's holding up my this one. It's from the Reese uh, Witherspoon. So uh, what her name? Did you oh, read it? Yes. This Eleanor, was great. Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Oh, and they're gonna make it into a movie. And I'll tell you what, I read it in like a day. Okay, hold on. Oh God, this is turning into another one. I'm gonna give you a couple more. Oh no, gonna... I'm a little, I, I was lucky I read one book, but I gotta tell you, I'm bored with watching TV. So give me a couple. So in the line of Eleanor Oliphant, uh, I read a lot, I read every night and it, that's not like, oh, she's a show off because all I did was read Cliff Notes when I was in high school. So my brother really I doesn't need I'm gonna pass the time. Okay, so. There is one. Stand by. Uh, okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Most of the books I you have are. You may want to read The Vanishing Half. Reese liked oh. it. Oh. The Vanishing What's that Half. about? So, The Vanishing Half is super interesting because there's this twin sisters or sisters. I don't think they're twin. One is dark black and the other one is light black. And to have a better life, she starts passing as white and disappears on her family. Wow. And they don't know where she is until the daughters meet in college. Oh my God. Is that a true story? No. Nope. It's a fiction. Yes. Still okay. good. The vanishing yeah. half. Okay. You have to, okay. So you have to read Olive Kitteridge. Now, I feel like I tried, this one's been out for a while and I, did I never, I, did I buy it and I never read it? Well, then maybe read Olive again because it's not okay. so much about Olive Kitteridge. Olive, again, has stories from different people who surround her life and it's interesting. Oh, okay, good. But if you like the, the one that you showed me, Eleanor Oliphant, it means- Yeah, that was great. Yeah, because it's weird, like they're strange, strange people, right? Yeah, just quirky. It was just great and really well told. Yeah. Yes, I'll tell you. Oh my God, where is it? Less is very similar. Oh, what's that? By Andrew Sean Greer. Okay. What's the gist of that one? The okay. gist of that is the, the this quirky. guy is also quirky and awkward and gay, and he's trying to like he screwed up his last relationship and decides to travel the world, and he's like he's got his issues because. Ah. Oh, you know what? The older you get, the more you identify with people that have just something a little bit broken, like the rest of us, don't you? I mean, it just makes it makes life more interesting. You know, and Marcella Raymond like those two. There's something wrong with us. You know what? It's just we're all a little broken. We all have something. So it's nice to see that, you know, you can find some escapism. And also nothing major happens. Like there's no. It's just a guy trying to make it through life. That's exactly right. And he'll, that's what you need. 
help me people there's one called mr obi or mr Ola. Oh, ov, ov, uh a man called ov read that did you read it i have it i have it i've had it for five years and i haven't read it so i should read that one next read that one next all right man called ov all right i gotta look at me reading books it's your reading books what a pandemic was able to do to you there you go thank you this is so fun it always is fun I know. You have the most views of all my wednesday wines by the way Get out of here i gotta tell you i miss going out and having a glass of wine with you and everybody else isn't this i do i do too oh, I, oh god yeah I just know. a little longer just a little longer a little longer when it warms up I, i've never looked forward to spring so much in my life right sitting on a patio having a cocktail of all people, me in October, outside a friend's house in their patio, sitting next to a heating lamp. <laughs> That's what it's come to. In my coat and scarf. I know. Hey, how are your parents doing? I know you're, I, I, that had to be so hard not seeing them over Christmas. Oh, it's been God. a year. It's been a year. Oh, oh my God. Anna, I'm so sorry. Are they, they're doing well? Oh yeah, they're great. FaceTime helps. Yeah. Antidepressants help. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, they're healthy. And so I keep telling them, don't fall, don't make any stupid movements, like stay healthy. My biggest fear is to show up and find them incredibly aged, but no, mm -hmm. they look great. Good, good. And my brother yeah. has been awesome and stepped up to the plate and taking care of them. And yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. We'll give them my, my best. My oh, they're, they're probably watching because they love you. Love them. And Your mom is so fabulous. I love how she's just always fabulous. I mean, who um, is the best? She told, she told my father the other day in Spanish, Ay, Dios me de salud, which means I hope God grants me health. And my father goes, not to leave me a widow. And my mom goes, no, to make it to Monday because there are these new cushions I want for <laughs> the living room. I love her. She's the best. Anna V, shout out to you. Shout out to her. I love love you, my friend. Thank you for doing this. Love you. Have a good night. Bye. Go to bed.